Hi there. So I get a lot of questions about how to study for biology specifically, how to study in general, um, because you kind of have to think in a certain way. And I think the biggest issue people have coming into a university and learning biology is that they're trying to memorize things the way they might have done in the past. And they're trying to memorize rules. And that just doesn't work because rules are only as applicable to the context that they're in, okay? Um, so something works a certain way because of the way that situation is set up. And that's gonna lead me to my number one rule when studying biology, and that is think in context-dependent ways, okay? So don't try to memorize stuff. And like I said earlier, if you think you know something works a certain way, right? It's only working in that way because the context that it's in is allowing it to work that way. So if I change the context, maybe you change the outcome, okay? So it, it requires thinking like that. Um, and in order to think like that, you kind of have to know um, the mechanisms of everything and, and, and figuring out and piecing them all together. It's like a giant puzzle, okay? I always liken it to, um, you have to memorize some things, right? Like the words I'm speaking to this video right now, I've memorized those words. I know what these words mean. But I'm not memorizing phrases or sentences. I'm putting them together and I'm forming sentences to try to communicate some message to you, okay? So the words I'm using are totally dependent of this context because I'm talking about studying biology, okay? So try to think about that. Think in context-dependent ways, okay? So nothing's ever true. If you, uh, if you want to really upset a biology professor, ask them, so... Uh, a plus B equals C and it always equals C or um, something is always this way or if this thing's not there, then this thing always happens. So using words like always, never, every time, um, that's sure to have them shake their head and look down again and say, no, no, that's not the way it works because you're not thinking in context dependent ways, okay? So the next thing I do is I think of a concept and I try to break it down, okay? So I might think of muscle contraction and what it means. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just start writing down all the things I know about muscle contraction or that it takes for muscle contraction. So I know it takes an action potential and I know that it takes uh, the release of neurotransmitters for muscles that's ACH. I know that you need um, a ligand receptor on the postsynaptic neuron or on the, the muscle, uh, in this case it's an ACH receptor. I know that um, you need that some voltage, some voltage to go down and to, to, uh, to open up uh, calcium storages on the muscle. So we need, uh, for that we need T tubules. We need, what else do we need? Um, we need a DHP and RYR receptor um, to have a conformational change to release that calcium. Uh, what, do, what do we need? We need the muscle itself. We need the sarcomere, which in it has a thin filament and a thick filament. And within those has actin, uh, troponin, tropomyosin. Sorry about the messy writing. Um, and then on the thick is uh, is where the myosin is, okay? So these, and I could probably keep going on, right? Like we need, for one muscle to contract, we need an inhibitory signal to the um, antagonistic pair or something like that. So you can really go on, right? And if you notice, you can take each of these things and you could break, the way I just broke muscle contraction down, you can break each one of these things down just like that, okay? So... But we're just doing muscle contraction. So if you remember, people will sometimes ask, how is this happening? What is this thing? What is it? Is the muscle contraction? How does it happen? Why is it happening? And then the grand question of why not, okay? If you can answer these four questions about anything in life, you have a very good understanding of what's going on, okay? So what is a muscle contraction? Well, a muscle contraction is when, you know, your muscle contracts, the sarcomeres are shortening, and that's what happens when you flex a muscle, right? You see Arnold, he's all bumped up, and his sarcomeres are shortened, and that's the contraction. Well, how does this work? Well, an action potential 
is propagated. Uh, is propagated down and you know neurotransmitters are going to bind to the muscle ACH will bind to the ACH receptors and um, you know that that the voltage will open up uh, voltage gated sodium channels and the muscle depolarizes and uh, the voltage travels down this T tubule and opens up DHP RYR receptors and calcium is released and then calcium is going to bind to troponin and it's going to have a conformational change and then the actin binding site is going to be exposed and the myosin head can do its claw and contract the muscle as uh, most people have seen if you haven't you can see it on youtube but so that's how it's working right why is this working that's an interesting question well it's working because i have an action potential um because i had you know neurotransmitters that re released from their vesicles with uh, via the snare protein and um, that I had a fully functional ligand receptor. Um, it's working because, you know, basically all these things we talked about are working in order. And you could go down and talk about each of those things again. And then the big question, why wouldn't it work? Well, what if there was no calcium? Well, then certainly maybe troponin couldn't, but calcium couldn't bind it to troponin. And then actin wouldn't be exposed, but maybe everything else worked, but that wouldn't lead to a muscle contraction, right? Maybe maybe you have some sort of mutation in the receptor, or you've inhibited the receptor uh, for the neurotransmitter ACH, right? So no receptor, or maybe it's broken. Well, then you certainly would not have a muscle contraction. Or let's see, we could go, we could basically pick any of these things and talk about what could go wrong in order for you not to have a muscle contraction, right? Maybe, maybe these, uh, this DHP receptor is broken or mutated or it's been damaged in some way. And when the voltage hits it, the conformational change isn't enough to open up, um, and the channel will cal where calcium rushes out to bind the troponin, right? Or maybe you have uh, a, a messed up myosin head and instead of being a nice myosin head maybe it's all denatured and all funny and you know it can't grab anymore so you could literally go on and on and like i said each one of these things you could unpack these things okay like for instance an action potential you can unpack an action potential and go way more in depth to everything we just did but all we really did was look at what how why and why not why aren't things working and when you can answer those things um, about anything pretty much in life, you will be able to understand it for the most part. And when you understand how things work, you can rule out things that you know won't work, okay? You can rule out wrong answers on test. You can rule out ideas based on, you know, these, these uh, situations that are dependent of context, okay? So um, I hope that helps. I know it's a lot of talking and craziness, but... This is what I do, and um, it works for me. Okay? Thanks.